guys, this is Right Ralph, and I'm coming here today to show you guys how to clean up your Windows operating systems and keep them clean for best operating performance. Um, it's really simple, and today we're going to do it the way that I do it. I'm, I'm a tech. I've actually been to school for it and all that good stuff, just so you guys know. Um, so this isn't just some random person, um, you know, trying to show you the way they do it. May or may not be incorrect. Um, this is the, by far, in my opinion, the best and fastest way of doing it with as little as tools as possible. And doing it this method will clear up everything for you guys. Um, it, it basically, if you do this uh, once a week, uh, depending, it really all depends on how much you use the machine and what hardware you're using. Um, so I can't really tell you, but every week whether or not you know depending on your situation it should be fine so just every week once a week every seven or eight days is totally fine if you do this every seven or eight days your machine will be totally clean and you'll be good to go and you'll be getting the most out of the machine um, as far as cleanliness um, optimization also plays a key role in that and we'll be going over that in another video today this is just about how to clean up your um, windows operating system so let's start. So basically, what, what I want you to do is open up your favorite browser, whatever browser you guys prefer to use. And um, you, some of you may or may not be familiar with this tool. We're going to type in CCleaner into your whatever search engine you use, search engine you use. Or you can just go to www.perform.com and it'll take you right here anyway. Also, the download link will be in the description, so no worries. You guys are really just going to have to click on that link down and below in the description, and you'll be good to go. So we're going to go ahead, and you're going to want to download this. Now, I'm not going to because obviously I have it installed. So we're going to want to go ahead and download this. When you guys have had it downloaded and installed, you're going to want to go ahead and open it up. So this is going to be the first stage here. And just so you guys know, you may or may not be familiar with CCleaner. If you are, just go ahead and skip through this this section if you want, or maybe listen to it because you might learn something you didn't know. Um, but this is going to be for the people, especially for the people who never even used this program before. Um, <clears throat> so, as you can see, I have the professional version, guys. Um, I do pay for it only not because the pay version comes with any features that you really need. I disable all of the pay features anyway because I'm a process whore and I don't like my machine using up uh, uh, random processes um, when I you know there's no reason to have it automatically clean things when it reaches a certain point and have processes watching that and so on and so forth so anyway when you come in here you're gonna see some key buttons on the on the side here um, the first thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna see the cleaner section it's gonna where you where it's gonna start you up you're gonna want to go through this first section of Windows tab and you're gonna want to click on everything that you want to include in the cleaning Basically, anything is that checkmark is going to be included in the cleaning. Anything is not checkmark will be excluded in the cleaning. And when you click on something like um, when you click on something important that may or may not do something that you like have adverse effects that you're not aware of, you will get a box that lets you know. So right here it says when I clicked on um, this, it said warning: save password. You will lose any save password if you select this option. So for me, obviously, I'm going to um, click check that, even though I don't use Edge. But so don't worry about um, about clicking things, not knowing what they are, and having adverse effects, um, because as you can see, it, uh, it it warns you and lets you know if something like that may be coming and you might not know. So again, you go through here, check everything you guys want. This is really up to you guys. Um, you know, uh, whatever you want to be included. Now, the next step I want you to do is go ahead and close CCleaner. I know that seems weird. Just go ahead and close it. Open up your browser again. Go to your search engine and type in CCleaner Enhancer. Now, this is a third-party program. It's totally safe. I've been using it for years, and it is awesome, guys. If you have CCleaner, CCleaner Enhancer is a must. It is a must. Basically, what this does is it downloads new directories. It adds directories to CCleaner that CCleaner can then clean up even more things. So basically, it adds directories for all sorts of stuff that you might not that you might have. Now, it's going to add those directories whether or not you actually have those directories on your machine. Um, so it won't add just the ones that you have. It'll add all of them. 
but it's still an awesome tool. So you go and click on download. Okay. You want to download, you know, either English or the multilingual, multilingual one, whichever one works for you, obviously. Now, it's not an install system. You basically just go ahead and you click download latest, and it's going to just basically inject those directories into CCleaner and make it even more of a, even better of a tool than it was before you installed this uh, extra stuff. So now that you have that, it's going to open it, you're going to open it, whatever. We'll wait, because this usually takes a second for it to do its thing before it's usable, so we'll wait for this. Alright, now, you already have all this stuff set up. This is real simple, right? You go to Applications, and you're going to notice, if you went there before, that now you have tons of stuff that is not included with CCleaner that makes CCleaner way better. It just makes it a better tool than it was before. So seek cleaner enhancer is a must, guys. It's a must. So this takes some while. If 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 you're if you've never used this before or if you've never used the seek cleaner enhancer before and you have a fresh machine, it won't be that big of a deal. But if you have a setup machine with all your programs and everything and you're good to go and it's not a fresh OS, this can take up to thirty minutes or an hour. Because it's slow, you gotta go e one by one ev through every single thing, guys, and make sure everything you want to be included is included. But see, it adds all sorts of cool stuff, like all of this stuff that isn't included with the original C cleaner. So these are all extra directories uh, that it can clean and even keep your machine more clean and your applications running better as well. So I've already ha I have this all set up the way that I want it, guys. There's literally nothing in here that I don't want checked, or it isn't checked that I do want checked. So it's good to go for me. But as I said, this is a lengthy process. The first time you do it, after you do it the first time, uh, you want to update the C Cleaner Enhancer about once a month because they regularly drop updates and new directories to it all the time. They're always adding stuff all the time. Um, so you want to go ahead and, 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 and download the newest version of CCleaner C Enhancer and run that and install the new directories about once a month. Just to make sure that you're getting all your directories and everything that you may have installed cleaned out. Um, it's just going to help you better. So basically, once you got all that set up, you just hit run, cleaner. You may get a window that says blah, 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 blah. Just go ahead and dismiss that and run it anyway. Um, I already have that set up so it doesn't pop up. So it's no big deal. So it's going to clean all the directories. It's going to tell you that it's done, how much space, or how much megabytes it's removed, and it'll give you a log of everything that is done as well. So that's good. You only have to run that once to pick everything up. So that's fine. The next step is the registry tool. You're going to scan for issues. Now this is going to pick up issues, and you're going to go ahead and hit fix it, fix selected issues. But you do you want to save backup changes to the registry? I always click yes. And it always saves it under my documents. And every couple months, there's these will pile up, and there'll be like 50 of them, you know, because I do a lot of cleaning. So every couple of months, you want to go into your documents folder, wherever you put these, and clear them all out. Because you most likely, if they're a couple months old, you're not going to need them. And the thing is, I've never actually needed these before, because this is, CCleaner is the best cleaner tool, in my opinion, that I've ever used. So we'll talk about that for a moment. Um, I've been using CCleaner for about seven or eight years. Um, close to when it first came out and it's been the best I've used tons of tools before back in the day there really weren't any good tools to clean up your system and back 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 in the day there really weren't any at all and you had to do everything manually so I started out doing all this manually which was a huge pain in the ass thank God for for new modern tools like C cleaner that actually work properly but anyway so I've had my experience with a lot of different cleaner tools and the experience isn't very good. Most of them don't work well. The registry cleaners, 98% of them always screw up the registry. This is the only one that, you know, in the, in the long time running that I've been using it has never once ever screwed anything up. The registry it, it, uh, cleaner has worked perfectly for seven or eight years. Never an issue. But I still back everything up. So, which is why I have the paid version because even though it doesn't benefit me in any way, it benefits them and I had been using and it's only like 20 25 bucks and I had you know one time fee and I had been using it for so long like seven or eight years I felt that I got and the fact that I never had one bug one issue anything wrong with the program whatsoever I felt that they deserved that money 
So I went ahead a, long, a while a while back, a couple years back, and bought the professional edition. Well, maybe it was like a year ago. I don't know. So anyway, when you're done running the first registry scan, keep in mind that the first scan isn't going to pick up all the registry issues. In fact, now on my machine, chance I already did this, so chances are uh, recently. So chances are, it's not going to pick anything up on the second scan. But make sure you keep clicking scan for issues until no issues are found. Don't just do one scan. Keep keep doing scans until there were no issues found, and then you're good to go. But nine out of ten, you're gonna want you're gonna run two or three scans and each time. It's gonna find new stuff. So just make sure that you do it until you keep doing it a couple times until nothing was found. So then your then your registry is good to go. Now the tools tab, the tools tab is pretty basic for what you. The tool the tools that Sea Cleaner come with are all the tools that all the cleaners come with. You're not going to find anything special or different in here. And you don't really need any of these tools. Like this is a good tool if you have an HDD, not an SSD, but an HDD. This tool is good to run every like six months and it'll free up a bunch of space for you don't run it on an SSD warning do not run it on an SSD you can and it probably won't kill the SSD but it's just I'm totally unhealthy for it so I, I I don't condone running it on an SSD but that choice is obviously up to you system restore obviously you don't need to use it for system restore that's pretty dumb Duplicate file folder or duplicate finder is pretty nice. It finds any duplicate folders or files on the machine. It delete, deletes duplicates. Um, really not a big issue, but it's kind of cool, I guess. I never use it because it really it's pointless for the most part, as far as I'm concerned. And all this stuff, browser plugins, you know, you can do that in your browser startup. Obviously, you don't need this for that. So tools, you know, use if you want to use them, but you they're pretty just basic. So there's nothing special going on here. And options are all up to you. But that's how to use the cleaner to the C cleaner to clean up your machine, including using C cleaner enhancer, which I highly anyone who has C cleaner must have C cleaner enhancer. It is a must. So that's the first stage of cleaning up your Windows operating system. So after you've done that, you want to go ahead and close out of that. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go into our tent folder. So you want to press the Windows key on your keyboard. It's usually on the left side of the keyboard and it's between control and alt. So you hit the Windows key and then you press R at the same time and you're going to get a run box like this, right? That says run. So you're going to get that box and in that box you're going to type in just temp like this, okay? That's going to take you to a temp folder. As you can see, mine is empty. Now, something you want to realize. A lot of times there are some files and folders inside these or there are some files and stuff or even folders inside these temp folders. Now, sometimes when, now of course if there's anything in here, you guys want to delete all of it. Everything that's in here, you want to delete it. You just highlight it, select it, whatever, and delete it, send, get rid of it. Thing is though, sometimes some of the stuff in the temp folder is not deletable because it's either being used by something, it, it might be something that was put there by a program that you have running. So you may either need to close those programs or restart the computer to actually clean everything out. Because a lot of times, like I said, something will be in use. So closing any open programs or restarting and doing this again, we'll get rid of those. But that may be an issue at first. It's really not an issue, but that's how you get rid of them uh, uh, um, if they say that they're in use or whatever. And then sometimes it say it might say if you're not the local administrator on that operating system and you don't have your privileges set up properly, and your rights set up properly, it might not let you delete the file because it might be something important, and it might, and it to the machine, although it's really not, and it might tell you that um, you don't have proper permission to delete that privilege file or whatever. Um, in that case, as of right now, I don't have. This is my first tech video, how-to video, so those videos will be coming on how to do those things and set up permissions properly and all that. But for right now, if you do run into that problem, clean out your temp folders, do a YouTube search and um, find out how to basically uh, uh, get into because uh, a lot of people when they install an OS even if they do it themselves they don't realize that they're not running on an actual admin local administrator account it's it's weird the way you have to do it and set it up anyway one day we'll get into that on maybe like a virtual machine or something but for now um, that's how you want to solve that if it says you don't have privileges to delete the file in the folders and blah 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 so you clear this out and then you go ahead and press Windows key and R again. Now, 
you're going to type temp, but before you type temp, you're going to hold shift and you're going to press the number 5, which is going to give you that little percentage symbol, okay? Then you type temp, then you do it again, shift, number 5, another symbol, okay? Then you hit OK or enter, whatever you want to do. And if this is the temp folder where most people are going to have a bunch of crap in here. So, again, as you can see, I do, and I cleared this out not too long ago. So, and I still have crap in here. So, you're going to go ahead and highlight it all like I did, delete it. Now, see, the action can't be completed because a folder or file in it is open in another program. Now, this is the, it, this has something to do with NVIDIA, so we'll skip that. And don't worry about that, guys. When this happens, it's no big deal. It doesn't mean it's going to stay there forever, but it's no big deal. You could either do a restart. Um, you could probably do a system restart, come back to this temp folder by doing, typing that, remember guys, percentage symbol temp, percentage symbol, by getting here, and then restart, get here again, and then you that will probably be cleanable because it shouldn't be opened by that program again. Um, if it is, then you just ignore it and one day it won't be. It's not a big deal if you have to leave a couple things behind. It's really not, if they're in use or whatever. Um, it's really not a big deal. I personally don't know what this is. I mean, it's NVIDIA something, some sort of NVIDIA cache. I don't know from what, though. Um, I have no idea. But, again, it's it's basically clean anyway, so it's no big deal. Um, we'll try again, and, yeah, it'll say, nope, can't do. Please open another program. And the thing is, I haven't opened any NVIDIA programs, the control panel or anything, so that shouldn't be open. But this stuff happens, and I'm glad it happened while I'm doing this video because it shows you that it's really not a big deal. So with that cleaned out, you go ahead and close that, and then obviously empty your recycle bin. Okay, now we're halfway done. Now basically what we're going to want to do again is we're going to hit the Windows key R, and we're going to type in disk. Or, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's not what we're going to do. Um, I totally had a brain fart. Okay, so scratch that. What you're going to want to do is you want to go to where yours, this is Windows 10, and this is where my search function is for my operating system. Yours will vary depending on where yours is. What you're going to want to do is you want to go to your search function. Usually if you Windows 7, it's going to be in here, okay, in your start bar. So you find your search function so you can search your operating system, and you're going to type in disk. Now for me, I have, um, I have, um, for me, I have, um, uh, what what's what's that service called? Um, uh, indexing. Indexing is basically a service that comes with Windows, and what it does is it takes everything and indexes it to an area, so that when you search something on your computer, the results are pretty much instant. Well, the problem is that indexing was made to boost the performance of HDDs. Solid state drives don't need indexing. They actually indexing is a reverse way, instead of Helping the HDDs with solid state drives, S, um, indexing actually um, hurts SSDs. It, it basically, because they're fast enough, they don't need them. The problem is, though, the operating system doesn't know where that stuff is. It doesn't have it on file. So it's not that the SSD is not fast, and that's why I have to keep doing this. It's because of the fact that um, the operating system doesn't know exactly where it is because it's not indexed. So really, that's the only thing it did is it just made it seem faster because it knew exactly what you were searching for and where it was on the disk and, and what you were looking for. With with it disabled, it doesn't. So it does take it it, it takes with Windows 8, it was different. It, it wouldn't do this. It would find it within a couple seconds. With 10, you have to type it in, close out, type it in, close out, type it in, close out until it pops up the second you type it in, or it will never find it. If you just leave it there, it won't do anything. You have to literally Type it in, close out, type it in, close out. It's annoying and stupid. And yes, I can make a shortcut to it. And in fact, I actually do have a shortcut to it right here. I just wanted to show you guys in case you had 10, um, that that's basically how you get to that. If you have, it, especially if you have indexing turned off. And what, what indexing causes, that's one of the issues it causes. But it's totally worth it. It's not a big deal. And like I said, you can pretty much put, you know, shortcuts, all that stuff anywhere you want. So... We're going to go ahead and open Disk Cleanup. We're going to run it for the main drive. Now, you want to scroll through here and make sure all these boxes are checked, okay, before you click OK. So we're going to click OK, and it's going to clean everything up. Okay, and we're going to do that again. We're going to go back to Disk Cleanup. 
we're gonna hit OK and we're gonna run this just one more time I, I find that doing each each cleanup twice with this cleanup is is pretty thorough um, and, and, and it works good so we're gonna run it once more hit OK oops hit OK and now we're going to click on this button, clean up system files. So this is going to be more of a, of a deep cleaning now. Um, so we're going to let this do its thing. Again, I forgot, but make sure all this stuff is checked. Hit OK. Again, one more time. Oops. Again, one more time. My mouse slipped on that one. And yes, I use Frat, so yes, I know it's old school. I've always, I, it's just one of those things I've used it for so long that um, I know there's better ways of doing it nowadays, but I just do it anyway. Okay, so we're going to do this again. Now, it's not, usually it doesn't get rid of, um, on Windows 10, it's not going to get rid of, it's not going to go down to zero. You'll notice if we go to disk cleanup again, that no matter which one we pick, there's still trash files. There's still there's half there there's less than half of what there was before, but there's still stuff in there. Now you can click on some of this stuff like view files um, and see this brings us to this, and you can just go ahead and uh, okay it's open okay that's fine no big deal. But as I was saying, because that's only one meg anyway, but you can do here and yeah it's not going to clean it up completely. It did in Windows 8.1 for me. In Windows 10, it doesn't. No matter how many times I do it, it won't get rid of it all, but it will get rid of most of it, so that's totally fine. If you're in Windows 7 or 8, if you do it a couple times, it should get rid of almost all of it or all of it. So, anyway, either way, it's fine. No big deal. As long as you just get rid of what you can. So, get rid of that. And so, that's that. Now, the next step is basically the last step to cleaning everything up and having a clean machine. So, the next step is we're going to go ahead and we're going to run, we're going to run, we're going to type, we're going to go to your window search, we're going to type defrag. Now, here's where it gets a little confusing. Um, if you have an HDD, which is a mechanical hard drive, it has a magnetic platters and a little arm that spins around and reads the data, you want to do this, just a straight up defrag, okay? If you have an SSD, you want to pick this one, which does, um, which does um, trimming and not defragging. So basically trimming is the equivalent of a defrag for an SSD except it takes only a couple seconds instead of like a really long time on an HDD. So we're just going to click optimize and it's going to do a trim. It's not going to take long and that's it. The trim's done. And then after that basically you restart the machine and you're good to go. Um, aside from aside from like you know maybe going to oh yeah one more step one more step. I'm sorry guys one more step. Other step is browser data, uh, clearing your browser browser data. So with Chrome, you just click this little line, three lined icon. You go to history, history, and then clear browsing data. Pick what you want to get rid of and what you not want to get rid of, and then and then always hit the beginning of time. And here you click this beginning of time, clear browsing data, and then your browser's cleaned out completely. All your history anyway. Your cache and stuff will be cleaned from CCleaner, but the history stays. So you may even clean out your history. Then that's fresh, um, and then after that, that's pretty much it. You just restart, and you're good to go, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, I really, I, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section, and I will, uh, I will answer them as, as quickly as I possibly can. And more videos like this to come in the future for sure. So that's pretty much it guys. It's real simple. You don't need a lot of tools. You just need seat cleaner and a little bit of know-how and that's it. And you can keep your machine running nice and clean for as long as you want. So just make sure you do that whole, just get used to that routine. Do it a couple times. Get used to the routine. Do it once a week. You know, it's like riding a bicycle. You'll remember it. It's really easy. Do it once a week and your machine will be pretty much clean to go, clean and ready to go. And um, yeah, because what happens is when you leave that stuff, guys, and it collects and it collects and it collects and it collects, when it gets to a certain file size, you start having issues. You start having browser issues. You start having PC or Windows issues. Just weird little things start happening when you don't keep your machine clean. Um, 
so keeping it clean is always a key thing that you want to do. So I was, I'm glad that I could bring this to you today, show you guys how to do it the, the proper way, um, show you that you don't need, you know, this tool and 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 this tool because they all pretty much do the same thing. Um, you really just need C Cleaner and that knowledge I showed you, and that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, I'll see you in the next one.